<laughs> Hello and welcome to Hard Lore episode three. Oh wow, it is three. This is I three. forgot because the last one was technicality. Yeah, right. They'll they'll never know that that was just one ninety minute session, <laughs> but the technicalities. My this is <sighs> who we got today, Colin. What a beautiful day to see <laughs> to see my blood relative Sean Martin <laughs> for the first time in three years. Sean, it's been so long. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you guys. You look owner just... owner of one of my favorite guitars I've ever seen. Oh, that that Which... less that last Paul custom. What do you mean? What do you mean oh. this one though? Oh! <laughs> oh, I fucking love that guitar. <laughs> It's perfect. It's always by my side. It's always yeah. right there. <laughs> One pickup, ready to rock. Yep. I, I can't believe you that go. you you didn't play that Les Paul for like for like a year with Twitching Tongues. Yeah, it was. You know, a lot, you weren't the only person. I had a lot of comments in my personal life about not playing a Les Paul. It was like people that have nothing to do with like 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 family members commenting on me. Dude, not you, playing were, a Les Paul. you were like uh, you were like. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Buck going into the party with the hat on, like it was like they'll kill you for not for not using the last ball. <laughs> yeah, and it was, but uh, but I needed a Kaler. I wanted to get down. I wanted to. We were shredding. We're, we're yeah, you know? right. You oh, really got that Hanneman, right? You got the Hanneman yeah. model. Yeah, that yeah. Thing was, so. I love that thing to death, and it plays just like a Les Paul. I don't care. People can hate on me for saying that, but you can't because I've been playing a Les Paul for mad long. I could say that. <laughs> That's right. You've earned the right. It feels the same. It's bad. The neck, the balance, everything. Yeah. So I feel super comfortable playing it, but it's got a Kaler and I could fucking pick it up with the fucking and, bar. And, and, and boy, and so boy cool. did you, man. And I think that's, that, <laughs> that's a good opportunity to kind of to intro this as like the year is 2015. Um, we just, Twitching Tongues just recorded Disharmony. Whole band leaves to do other bands. And Taylor and I are in panic mode. And send a... I don't even know what to call it. It was an. It was just an email that was like. It was a cold email. For it, sure. I, I, I might as well like to 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 us. I, ta ta Taylor sent the email. So, like Sean Martin as a guitar player is the first live musician I ever saw, and you and I have spoken about this. Like, uh, like yes. the my first experience seeing live music was seeing Hatebreed. Oh really? I didn't yes. know that. And then just total full circle. So <laughs> you really got, you really got, I feel bad. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 This it's is such a bad thing. And then, then it cuts to us in some van in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you little shit. <laughs> boy, boy, does it. Um, but it's, Taylor sends this email. That's just like, yeah, I emailed Sean Martin, but like, I guess we should start looking at like realistic things. Uh, and then like a week later you were like, yeah, I'll do the tour. And then, <laughs> and then, and then two days later, you were like, yeah, I'll do the other tour. And then two days after that, it was like a lamb, a lamb go ad mat of like, Sean Martin, Sean, <laughs> he's back. Return the king. Yeah. <laughs> Never met. Yeah. <laughs> but we just knew, you know? Oh, that's crazy. Dude, I assumed, was... I assumed you guys had known each other. Never met these guys. I just said they, we had a lot of mutual friends though. And yeah, like, it was yeah. definitely, and I liked the band. I had already liked, I thought Twitching Tongues was great. I thought it was ob obviously something a little different at the time. And like, I just, and then I knew dudes that knew them and, and it was just like, I was like, yeah, I, I backed them. And it was funny because I, I tattoo and I was working at a shop in uh, Massachusetts with Jamie who plays drums for Death Threat. And I was working at his shop and a bunch of cats came through on tour like dudes from misery uh, the misery in austin was playing with them and a bunch of people but anyway a bunch of people came through the tattoo shop and i went to the show afterwards and i was kicking it and i was talking to people like that i met that night that were in some of those bands and stuff and uh i brought up twitching tongues like where i was like yeah like i don't know a lot of the newer stuff but i like twitching tongues a lot like that band is awesome like and dudes were like oh yeah those are our boys like blah 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 like kind of like and then the next time I saw a couple of those dudes, I was in Twitching Tongues. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so great. Like, and it wasn't like, it was completely like, it was completely organic. I just yeah. felt really, I don't know, man, anybody that has the balls, to, not, I don't mean it to sound like that. It's not like you have yeah. that balls, but like anybody that's just like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I don't think, I don't think it's out of line. Like I'm not like fucking Yngwie Malmsteen, but like, 
Anybody but you're but, just like, I don't but, know this person, and I'm just gonna fucking ask him to fucking do a yeah. tour for us. Sean, I'm like, respect, like, yo, what's up? I'm down, like, <laughs> fucking doing fucking infinity symbols over here for a living. Let me fucking, <laughs> Sean, Sean, you are my Ingve Momstein. Oh, no. that, that, and that's what I'm trying to say is like, it's, I'm not exact. The first live musician I ever saw was a guy who 20 years or what? 17 years later, I was in a 70 band. years later. No, no. <laughs> I think um, for me, that would be like, that would be like fat Mike from no effects joining harm's way. See, <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what it would be for me. <laughs> that's, that's my Sean Martin. But then, but then like we spent five minutes together and it was like, Oh, like, Dude, it was instant. It was instant. Yeah, it was like, and I'm like, like, I don't know if it's just because of my upbringing or whatever, but I'm very, I'm very cavalier with like, I'm fine. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. Like, I'm never like, I've never felt like if I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere confidently. And now I kind of like, I'm not, I just like, cool. These like, obviously we're on the same level. I don't know these dudes. I'm getting picked up at an airport by one of them. And a bunch of my dudes fucking back them. Like a bunch of my good friends think these guys are fucking awesome. So that's good enough for me. Yeah. So blah, blah, blah. And then fucking within 10 minutes of knowing them, it's just like, oh, wait, we're, we might actually be related somehow. Like, <laughs> like this is hilarious. It like, was, it was legit like a, a single conversation and like going through the Starbucks drive through you and I were like, oh, we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> so we were uh when when we thought about having you on the, like the the idea would be to uh, touch on if if you have any favorite kale moments oh man and, i oh. feel like we got to say that's the grand finale today. oh is that the end kale. fair enough what can i say kale yeah. kale saying um life with kale is my favorite kale sh- moment sh- there's so there's a lot shout out kale if you're watching this shout out kale i mean that with all the love in my heart i imagine he is watching this kale played drums and twitching tongues ghost main misery all these other bands he's a legend in the game it, i don't care what legend, says. Absolutely. i don't care what anybody says and a lot of people don't say anything kale don't get fucking crazy all right <laughs> what, are they, what are they saying jesus christ um he you know <laughs> it, traveling with him is an experience unlike no other and mm-hmm. in the moment you're like You you must pay, Kale. But then, <laughs> but then six months later, you're thinking about it, and you're and you're sharing the experience with someone, and you're like, oh, that was the greatest thing to ever happen. So Dude, I, yeah, he's a, he's like a he's like a um he's a high point of any like you're like and then this motherfucker <laughs> and then that like you know like no matter what's going on and then you throw a little kale on top. There's a couple. It's just like <laughs> there's a couple kale quotes that come to me once a day. <laughs> I, but, I definitely have a couple stories in my brain too because i saw him last time i saw him was touring with Ghostmate when we toured with ghost mm. so he was doing that whole thing too he's he's wearing yeah. masks and yeah just being a weirdo mm-hmm. you know like yeah, to in, to his delight you know oh yeah yeah all right sean what what is like the the first couple shows with twitching tongues like when you joined after practicing after getting to know everybody, does anything stand out? Uh, it was cool. I hadn't played out in a, a little bit. Like I hadn't played in a while. Like played out in a while. So it was fun just to just to play a show, like a real show, because mm-hmm. it hadn't been. It, like honestly, like it'd been a while since I, like I I did Hate Breed, and then I was in Kid Cudi for a while, and that was like fucking arenas and shit. Right. Like not not even talking shit. Like it was just really good to play a fucking show, like a real like where I come from. To, even though it was in L.A., like yeah just a lot of good friends were there a lot of people i hadn't seen in a minute and this and that and it was so it was cool it was the first couple of shows with twitching tongues was great on a lot of levels just because i felt great to be playing again in that atmosphere and in that genre if you will and like uh it was exciting and i didn't really know these guys but i had a great connection with them right away and everything just clicked musically like I, it just felt really good like it and, and uh, the shows were fucking crazy and awesome. And it was just great to be back in like my natural environment, it felt, you know, and, and I'd been away from it for a little bit, you know, maybe a couple of years at that point. Yeah. So Colin, do you remember what the shows were or tour was? Yeah, it was the uh, Disharmony record release shows, which is just yeah. insane. Uh, b- yeah. b- before those, we did the music video. Right, the music video. Yeah, yeah, which is the hilarious. Yeah. Um, cause we, and I filmed that. I filmed that in Connecticut at the graveyard by my house. Like that's so great. Never met. 
Oh, when really? that never yeah. met. Made a video together before we ever met. Yeah, wow. that's, and so that's, we, you know, that's cool. We remoted him in, but uh, <laughs> we, we did the Disharmony video with the old lineup, and then like a month later had to do this the video for the second single with this with this new lineup which was anthony sean and yeah. our beloved kale uh, yeah and the rest of us are just playing in this one room while sean is at home in the graveyard right. 70 feet from his house <laughs> um, and it was awesome it was like it's some i just ran what you shot like through this i recorded it with the camera that we shot that other yeah stuff with. yeah you guys had an actual vhs camera and, that, and then you like i know you did some actual oh, lo-fi awesome shit yeah. which rules and that video to, awesome. to this day is like one of the most fun i've ever had like creating. yeah the video is great and it was so cool you know and that was a you know i gotta say like that was um it was it was really great like, it was really like it felt really good to be being in a creative zone and i didn't even know you guys yet but you were, it felt nice to be included in that aspect at that point because i was like whatever i don't even know it's like i don't even know like i was not i wasn't like being like dismissive about it but i didn't i hadn't met anybody yet but i technically had joined the band without meeting them anyway so it didn't matter so like yeah I'll, I'll, we'll do the video and everything and I, I, I was like i was pumped on it like i was like this is fun as fuck it was this awesome. is like the kind of shit like i'm i felt like uh and no disrespect there I, no my, my boys all my dudes every band i ever been in, everybody i collaborated with are still my good friends and everything's all good but it was fun to like be in a band as dumb as it sounds with like dudes that were like a lot younger than me and who kind of got it took taking the piss out of stuff a little bit but like dead serious and like <laughs> it was just the, en the energy was really good and i was like yeah. fuck i'm fucking kind of psyched about this this yeah. is like I got my wife filming me in a graveyard playing guitar. <laughs> I'm like 85 years old. I'm like, this rules. I fucking love this. Like, it's fucking, but it was like so cool because we made it happen. And when those dudes put it together and showed it to me, I was like, oh, these dudes, all right, they got their shit together. Yeah. Like, they're making it happen in themselves. Like, that was really I, impressive. I wore a me. leather jacket in a pool, brother. Yeah. It was, I was, I was, I was so great. I was letting you know right away. I think away. that's still your picture when you call me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and who's floating in the pool? Is it Brody or is it Anthony? Anthony. Anthony. It's Anthony. Kim, Kim yeah. hit him with the frying pan. And he's That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that video was great. But yeah, and that was fun. And every all my dudes at home were stoked. Like everybody was really happy. Like they were pumped that I was like fucking gonna play again. So yeah. like whatever. So, I wasn't never totally retired or anything, but like I was kind of just going deeper into doing tattooing and like kind of not really worrying about. It. Yeah, I didn't yeah. care at that. You point. were born so to play guitar. Me, yeah. Thanks. Of course. Hey. <laughs> And and I and I feel like down the road when we got to do Gaining Purpose and we actually made a record together and you got to flex your solo muscles, it was like aside from the Converge song that you played on, it was like oh, yeah. like you no yeah no one knew I knew how to actually play uh, nobody knew yeah. and you it was well, like oh you're actually unbelievable at guitar. There's that clip in the <laughs> stop oh stop it. There's that clip in the uh, in like the Metal Blade making of. Where Sean, you accidentally hit a harmony. Oh yeah, and that ended up becoming part of the song. And it's fucking awesome, you know. But it, but it's just, yeah. it's not, you know, obviously happy accident, whatever. But it's the realization on your face when everyone goes, "Whoa," you know. Yeah, I yeah. I was like, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> and that happened constantly. Like just, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, it was and it was fun to be in an environment where I was able to just like know that this shit was getting like not that it wasn't it's like it was just cool to be in a little bit i was still playing awesome riffs with my friends a new group of friends but then it's like oh we could be it's a little more uh less restrictions yeah but i left you That's two cool. spots to solo on in this song yeah you know? um, yeah <laughs> so the, how soon how soon after um those shows did we do our was that the same year that we did our tour that, yeah, that, that was, like was right, right after that was that after. tour that was that tour. So yeah, technically, it was the beginning of the that tour. The first two in, days were in California. It was in the, Texas. We met, we met up in Dallas, Texas. Right. Yep. Dude, uh, uh, Chris Mills driving the Harm's Way van, stop and go traffic, rear-ended a guy on the way to that show. Oh, man. Asshole. Classic Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, by himself? Or were, or no, were we were together? all in the car. Okay. We were all in, and I don't even know. He wasn't even, like, looking at his phone or something. He just didn't expect. And he just, like, <laughs> and the guy didn't stop. Oops. Nothing. It was nothing. The guy just was, like said "fuck it" and kept driving. But we oh, did. so it didn't become a. But nah. still, enough to add but some stress. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. remember that show. Didn't Dying Fetus play like right around the corner? 
Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think they did. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. some some yeah, I think so. No, there was something else going yeah, on yeah. right around the corner. Was this was it was it Dallas? Yeah, it was Dallas in a yeah, room. Yeah, Dallas, I, and there was some other show going on. Like when we were like, "Oh, great!" Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was like, <laughs> that was that was kind of the whole vibe of that tour. Was like, oh, there was another show going <laughs> yeah. on. That was great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, right down the road. Yeah, so, all right, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that tour. So there was also so disharmony had come out and Rust had come out, and you know there was like a joint headlining mm-hmm. record release tour, and it wasn't. Great. Wasn't great. And Wasn't I, great. that was kind of that that <laughs> that set the tone of just like us playing disharmony songs to begin with. It was like it was like, oh, we shouldn't play these and nope it's not yeah. it ain't mm. it ain't working. Uh, mm. you know? It it happens. <laughs> it it definitely happens. I mean, it's the At, same we play one Rust song these days. <laughs> but you could play more Rust. We could play more, but but it's the same kind of we like the other stuff better, you know, it, it happens. And, then, and yeah. then like, just you, you, you gauge what, who's doing what to what song. And it's like, yeah. ah, okay. I guess we got to do other stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we were in Texas and then I, we kind of went towards Florida. We played an off show without yeah, you guys. Did play. Didn't we play the skate park on that one in Tampa? No, and maybe I'm getting a couple of them confused. We played yeah. there a couple of times, yeah. but I can't remember now. But yeah, and then I can't, I really can't. Yeah, I know we started in Dallas and then yeah, we made our way west. It's it's all no, we, started in, we started together in Dallas. Yeah. yeah. But I can't, and then it ended in Chicago. I yes. think it, it felt like kind of, an, yes. uh, kind of an uneventful tour because of just the lack of good shows. <laughs> I, I can remember a couple. <laughs> Shut you know? up. I could definitely remember, dude. Do you remember North Carolina? No. It was in did. Raleigh, or I think Raleigh, North Carolina, and it was Raleigh. a huge room. Raleigh. Raleigh. And during World War Five, like all of the young and in the way guys, like murder. I do remember that. that remember was that? Great. It was yes. the the it was the venue's last show. Yeah. So people were tearing shit off the wall. There were like pictures of famous artists who would play oh, there yeah, that people was, were like yeah. breaking shit off like i remember that yeah a, a lot of it is just, i think it was a like i i had a hard time dealing with the response of the record so yeah yeah, I, yeah, yeah. you were you were quiet oh, about it man. but in hindsight i realized you were going through hell oh, dude it, i was it's... i was seeing fucking helicopters and <laughs> yeah. ieds blowing up like it's every funny day. like for me like i realized it as we were um so like joining the band at that point and then like getting to be actual life friends mm-hmm. like and then touring and then making music together and the whole thing it really put things into perspective as to how you were affected by the res- the reception of disharmony i don't oh, yeah. mean that like i mean gaining purpose is basically a response like you yeah. know what i mean but like you know but like it was like also awesome to see you empowered by yeah, well, fuck you. This is what I do. Yeah, and totally. If you don't, totally. if you don't like my decisions with my art per se, like fucking, then fuck you. Like, <laughs> and that's okay because disharmony fucking rips, dude. Like, I wouldn't have joined the fucking band if I Taylor sent me that record and I thought it sucked. And that, right. you know, I remembered that, and it was like, like, oh, okay, Sean, Sean likes it, so <laughs> yeah. Like, what, like, but I and I don't have some critical agenda. Like, I'm not trying to be cool, and I'm yeah. not like no, 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 no shit talking or anything, but like. Like I was like, like I'm not trying. I don't. My opinion is just honest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, these dudes fucking this shit is sick. I want to know what. Like this fucking riff is wild. Like listening to shit back, rewinding. Like yo, what the <laughs> fuck? Like I was psyched on it because it was really heavy, and I understand that. That's. A, I also understood that it was a departure mm-hmm. from the sound that you guys were known for, which made sense for me in my mind to kind of slide in if it was going in that direction. Yeah. Like I was just like, fuck, these are fucking wild ass riffs. Like sick. They are. <clears throat> and then and, yeah. and it's like we kind of were like, oh, should we not do that? Because <laughs> like because of the response it was like, oh, should we do less wild riffs? Right. Yeah, but like not if that's what you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what Gaining Purpose was. It was like, hey, let's yeah. just do what yeah. we want to do and not worry. Um, it was fuck, uh man. it was cattle decapitation, by the way, not dying fetus. I just uh, remember. Yes. Um, so, uh, another another thing I remember is playing in Cleveland at uh, that bar. The bar. Oh yeah, now that's class. now that's class. Now that's class. Yeah, and being in the basement 
and sub zero. Su- and, but suddenly, I found myself alone in a room with Sean Martin, who I you know just met on the tour, and Human Furnace. And, oh yeah, and they're just talking. <laughs> And like my one of my first tattoos is a ringworm tattoo. You know, I'm a huge ringworm oh, guy. Oh, that's great! So I was just like, "Oh shit, <laughs> dude!" I have a great furnace story. Oh, dude, he's the best. he's he is a great furnace story himself. <laughs> he just is so one of the greatest people in all my life that I've ever met. Um, a, a, I, I, a, sorry, isolation had just come out, and we were playing Summer of Hate in Cleveland, and we only have vinyl of Isolation. And yeah. I see Furnace, and I, you know, th- we're, I'm fucking young. This was like 12 years ago now, you know, th- 10, 11 years. And so I go up to him, I'm like, hey, man, love your band. Huge, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. My band just put out this record. Like, I'd love for you to check it out, you know? And it's like noon on a Saturday. And I'm, yeah. handing, oh, him, Lord. I'm, I'm handing him a full LP, and he goes, uh, thanks, man. Uh, you got any CDs? <laughs> I just, I just had to be like, no, man. And then on the post-human headliner, Ringworm was direct support. And I told him about I was like, do you remember this? And he was like, no, nah, but you ever thought 10 years later I'd be fucking opening up for you? <laughs> uh, well, I Amazing. Filled, I filled in for... Dude, exactly. I filled, Perfect. There was a tour that was Nails, Bitter End, Ringworm, and New Lows. And I played drums for New Lows on it. I remember that. And uh, John Glue from Nails <laughs> referred to him at, to his face the entire time as the human thermos. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, not even thinking about it. <laughs> like, not malicious? No, not at all. He's like, a, he's like, thinks he's awesome. He's like, dude, human thermos <gasps> sounded fucking like, unbelievable tonight. <laughs> dude. And, and like, and like, you and I, like, I met human furnace properly through you like the at that show the cleveland show that just all came yeah. back to me is eating <laughs> eating taco bell at like two in the morning with sean martin and human thermos the <laughs> human furnace <laughs> jesus christ uh just being like damn this is pretty sick uh but yeah human human thermos has stuck with me for for 10 11 years now <laughs> since that tour i fucking Fuck. love ringworm he liked it so <laughs> This is yeah. He loves all that. We call yeah. Hunan furnace. It's been a lot of things. Fern, fern is good. Oh, fern, yeah. yeah. I don't think he liked that one, but it didn't stop me. <laughs> Something I learned very. He's the best. I, that's yeah. like he really is one of the best dudes in all my in all my travels. Like meeting people from all over the place, playing in bands like yeah. furnaces is like. Yeah, obviously him and three gun are like still oh my god still like great friends of mine like but like but man like fucking so grateful that i got to meet them guys and become life friends with yeah. them you know after after doing those couple tours with hatebreed that we did and like i got to be friends with frank like he, oh yeah he and i like what a funny little friendship it is now like he and i just talk about kiss all the time and he'll just text me like yeah. he'll text me like twice a year and he'll just say like hey best friend how you doing <laughs> Uh, <laughs> something I learned very early touring with Sean is it's, it's like, you know how you can like scroll through Wikipedia and get from like Apple to Vladimir Putin in like yeah, three right. clicks. Just, yeah. Yeah. Totally. There's, there's like, like with talking to Sean, something will lead to this time me and BD blank. <laughs> So like there's there's like a there's like a Sean Martin oh yeah this one time me and Chris Beatty story for like <laughs> any when I when I say those any occasion when I say those words to you can you give me something if just you this time me and Beatty if I say uh I don't know fucking mason jar <laughs> How, can you can you get me to a Chris Beatty story? I would say yeah. This one time, me and Chris Beatty <laughs> were drinking moonshine out of a mason jar. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got probably pretty drunk and may or may not have thrown a bunch of stuff around and raised a lot. Of, you know, like I, yeah, raised a lot of hell, I'm sure. But yeah, we definitely drank moonshine out of a mason jar together. So yes, you can probably just throw anything out there, and I could. But it's a tried yeah, and the, tested formula. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like we have a lot of adventures, man. That, that that you know, Chris is obviously like all those dudes. I love them, man. Like, there's no 
when I left the band, it was uh, it was never any beef or anything, and everybody knows that. But like, they really are my good friends forever. Like, and me and Beatty are still. Beatty does real estate with my. Well, he works for my wife's oh, real estate company. Oh shit! So like, we're it's family forever. But like, me and Beatty just were like two, two peas in a pod when I joined the band. You know, it's just like ah, <laughs> oh, right. it's like kind of like whatever. Just dude from Bridgeport, a dude from Waterbury, not scared of anything, and just traveling around. <laughs> <That's> so- <laughs> When, uh, <laughs> what year did you join the band? I uh, joined the band in 90. I joined the band one year after Satisfaction, like November, October, November, 98. And what was that? Yeah. Like, did you uh, know, I didn't, did you know you were joining, like you were going to sit on a rocket ship basically? No, no. But like I, de- and I didn't, well, I didn't want to join hate breed. Like they were, they Boulder was trying to get me to join for a while, and I was just kind of like, I was in 100 Demons, and then I was also in Death Threat. So, like, but I wasn't like, I was like a, a, a sub for Death Threat because, yeah. again, my dudes, man, yeah. like fucking Aaron's to, to this day, one of my, I don't speak with him that much, but only because we're old and living our lives, but like, fucking one of the best friends I ever made in my life. So, I was always a sub for Death Threat at that point, and then I was in 100 Demons. So, I was not unhappy. Right. I was just like, you know, I was a roofer. Like, I don't know. I was just like fucking living a regular ass life, playing in these bands, having fun, playing shows and shit. But uh, so Boulder was always trying to get me to join and get me to join. Like I have, um, I got a, I found them when I moved and I have like cassettes from my old answer machine of Boulder, like talking shit to me. Like, oh man. Oh, that's I know, so good. Like, I know you're listening to this. I know you're listening to your answering machine right now. Real, real while I'm at leading this message, you fucking asshole. Just join the fucking band. Stop being a fucking asshole. Like all this shit. Like, it's so funny. And then I finally, uh, uh, they asked me to do a tour with them. And they were able to like, you know, they said, we'll be able to give you this much to do the tour. And I was like, yeah, all right, cool. I'll just do the tour and fucking, you know, cool. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm seeing that. a pattern. And then, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's like yeah, it's kind of like how I roll in life. But then, uh, and then, I, but I was in 100 Demons at the time, and, I, and those guys weren't too happy about me taking that tour. So then that kind of led to me having to make a, a decision. And then I just decided that if uh, you know if I have to make a decision, then I'll go with the people that aren't asking me to make a decision. It was that simple. So. Uh, then I joined Hate Breed full time, and I was like, "All right, I guess this is what I'm doing." Yeah. Like, fuck. And then I was still roofing full time, and like just being a maniac, like, yeah, you know, just really living some wild ass lifestyle, roofing and just living in Waterbury, and then doing a tour with them, and like yeah. coming back and yeah. being on the block, and like where the tattoo shop ended up being for 20 years and stuff it was this wild ass neighborhood in Waterbury that I always hung out in. So I was just always there, like hanging out, doing sketchy shit and fucking <laughs> like then going on tour and roofing and like, whatever, like, and then, uh, then we had a point, I had a falling out with the dude I was doing roofing with and we had a tour coming up and I was just like, you know what, man, I'm done with this shit. Like, I'm just going to like pedal the metal. Like me yeah. and Jamie had talked about it. We'd all talked about it, but it was like, let's just like, let's just not come home. Like by hook or by crook, we ain't going to make money on this store. But if we don't come home, it don't matter. The budget will carry it like, or whatever. Yeah. Like, well, you know, and we just said, fuck it. And we just started touring nonstop. And that's like how it, it kind of got, I got absorbed into it more. Like I joined the band. I was good friends with those guys too. Like me and Boulder were the dudes. Yeah. So like, it was like a, a, a thing where it was just like, they were just another hardcore band in Connecticut. We played with them. We were friends with and Jamie, put on most of the shows back then so like uh so like when i joined the band and then i actually did that tour and then all that shit happened and we did a couple more tours and then i was tired of roofing and then all of us were kind of tired of what we were doing at that point we just decided not to come home and that's when shit started we had a dancing tour then we had a sepultura tour and sepultura took us to europe first time we went to europe Sepultura took us Insane. like and just fucking yeah. push it yeah. just went like holy fuck once we were ready to stop fucking around yeah. and take it seriously it was like the the, the the gods blessed us in terms of like the actual gods of metal mm-hmm. like blessed us by hey we like your shit come do this with us and yeah sure no money like let's do it like fucking sleep it on the floor sleep on the side of the road awesome 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 but fuck man we just got a slayer tour what the fuck yeah like shit. <laughs> and so it, so and it happened really quick like i joined the band it didn't happen really quick but like i joined the band and we were just doing shows regular local and then hitting a tour it was you know regular shit and satisfaction was out 
and it was making noise, yeah. but this is 97, 98, 99, you know? And then, uh, we were still just playing a bar and then getting a tour and playing a cool club and then this and that. And then like, just regular, like Jamie would put enough shit together for us to make some money. And like, it was like, we were hustling and playing and like regular hardcore, yeah. regular ass hardcore shit, but like on a bigger level. Cause Jamie was a real hustler, you know? Mm -hmm. So like he was always getting the shows. We were always working. So it was cool. But like, then all of a sudden we're getting these tours and we're not making money, but who gives a shit? Because, Slayer. Who needs the money? Yeah. I'm fucking on tour with fucking Slayer. Yeah, yeah totally. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like or we're going on tour with Danzig. That's crazy. Like yeah. we did, you know, we did some cool stuff. We did Danzig Sam Hain reunion. Like, you know, like we did like we, it was just like we just got in and people liked us. And, and back then we were super wild. So like people kind of liked that about us too. There's a little bit of we were we were a little wild. Yeah, there's, back there's, then. There's, yeah. There's we, we learned to calm down. So. <laughs> How what good uh, um did you, like when in this touring process did you guys go? Okay, I guess we should start working on another record. Because it was a that's a long. It was like a yeah. It's like a Michael Jackson thriller to bad type <laughs> gap. It's a five year gap. Yeah, which is yeah. which is crazy. Like for most bands, you're trying to do a two year record cycle at most. Yeah, yeah. we weren't. We were. I, you know, I can't, I can speak on a, the situation in a, in enough. Like I, I wasn't contractually obligated to anything, but mm -hmm. the band was. Yeah. So we were just kind of like unhappy with the situation and uh, we weren't willing to mm. give in. Uh -huh. you know? So it's like, say right, no more. Fine. We'll, just, yeah. yep. we'll just rock, we'll just rock, we'll rock this thing. Yeah. Like fine. And then when we made enough noise, we just worked our asses off and made enough noise to where we were important enough for someone else to come in and yep. help us with our situation. Amazing. So, wow. Yeah. That really, that. really brings, that's yeah. like mystery solved. This is an yeah. ancient mystery. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. And then yeah. perseverance yeah, and, and rise of brutality are like back to back. So that was, yeah. And we, Go we ahead. were writing and we were, we were recording demos and stuff, you know, like uh, here and there, you know, definitely. Like, but we were torn and just making noise and we were just like, and I was just like, you know, like I, I just had faith in Jamie because he had a kid to feed and I was kind of wild. Like I was like, this is what I need in my life, you know, like whatever. Like I kind of want to play guitar. I fucking want to play guitar. I don't want to be a roofer or yeah, a fucking yeah. Yeah. drug dealer. Like that's ridiculous. Like whatever. It's not ridiculous. But at that point, like I was just like, <laughs> like it'll do. But, roofing. Yeah. Like it was just like, I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? So like, I was just like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I just get to play my guitar and then I come home and I can pay my rent too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Like, I mean, that's the dream. Fucking, Fuck yeah. That's it. I'm good. Yeah. Set. Done. I can do this. This is it. Thank you. Whatever, whatever it goes after this, I'll take it. But this is cool. So this, this but. brings me to my favorite hate breed Sean Martin video, which you and I have talked about in the past, Sean, but I, I got to bring it up anyway. And it ties into the <laughs> guitar. It's uh hate breed playing proven on Ozfest, I think somewhere in Ohio, mm -hmm. Colin, you should be able to find it. Yeah. I'll find e it. Easy. And during the, the pit part, the camera zooms out and out and the pit never ends. Like the camera, <laughs> the camera can't fit the whole pit into it. And suddenly yeah. it's just like bubbling, boiling water. And I just, yeah. and you guys were a four piece at the time. Yeah. And, yeah. We and worked I, for a few years and playing. Um, I mean, obviously you recorded it. You, you, you're super familiar with the riff, but like, that's a riff. And and one little fuck up on a triplet there, you know, like oh, with yeah. a crowd like that, like I can't um I can't express how cool that video is to me because it's oh, it's pure it's just, just like awesome. Ugh, like it, uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's Thank so you. good. Yeah. Hey, dude, dude, I gotta tell you, man, I had a lot of uh I had a lot of moments in my life. I'm super grateful for everything, man. Like that's fucking so surreal. Like I always say, like like I got a lot of great friends uh, that are like my day-to-day -day friends that I've met through music, through the hardcore scene. And, and I just like, really, I'm blown away, dude. I'm just some dude from Waterbury. I don't know what the fuck happened. Mm. Like it's sick. Mm. It's sick as fuck. <laughs> like I look at that stuff and I don't, I don't even believe that to me. Like, I don't even fucking believe it. Mm. Like it's so cool. But at the same time, I'm kind of like a weirdo where I kind of wasn't impressed with it at all the whole fucking time. That's like, how it is. But though, I dude. Like I wasn't like cock. It's not about being. Cock. I was just like I was in such. I was in such disbelief that I didn't take it seriously while it was happening. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I just got to go do this shit. There's t- how many thousands of people? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Holy fuck, this is crazy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, you know, or you're just dead zone. Like, and there was a lot of times too, like no bullshit, like not to get dark or anything, but I was drunk a lot too, man. Like I was like, we were going so hard that I was just kind of like in a mode of like, I was at war all the time. Like yeah. I was living my whole life to play that riff. Yeah. That that moment of that night was the whole reason I existed. So like I was like going out there in a feverish, anxiety riddled, angerish, angerish, like just losing my shit. And then I finally get to play the riffs and I feel settled down. Other than that, I could not understand what I was doing there. It was like <laughs> weird <as> shit. <laughs> which uh which like a total 180 would be like us in Europe a few years later. <laughs> um, I I think I think we should talk about <clears throat> that European tour that we did that made us that made you and I at least <sighs> broken. You know what that broken tour did, Colin, you, bro, No, that that tour made me realize one thing. I'll always be in twitching tongues, <laughs> but we may never go to Europe again. <laughs> And, and, that being said, whatever, <laughs> let me know. I don't know. It was, that was, <laughs> dude, that was almost four years ago. And I, yeah. I haven't toured since. So it was like, yeah. it was, was four that, weeks in Europe, four weeks in the US back to back. Was that the vein tour? Yeah. That was the vein tour. So okay. this is day one. Okay. Bohan? Yes, sir. Day one. <laughs> the booking of this tour was done around Twitching Tongues finally being able to be horizontal. You know? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. We have this little mini bus thing that, like, they call it like a missile or something. (sighs) No, it was a, it was a, it was a sprinter, but it was basically a modified sprinter, like a jumbo sprinter that was modified so it could be a small tour bus, but not quite like the ones we have in America. Gotcha. It it had, it had seven bunks, so it was like everybody had one, which was this was awesome. It had a little Marshall fridge. You know. Yeah. Who doesn't sure. love that? So cool. <laughs> Day one, Bohan. Oh, I remember now. Oh, even before that, Vane, oh, no. we got Vane on the tour. We asked yeah. MAD. I don't know if I'm breaking any confidentiality things here, but we asked <laughs> MAD, hey, <laughs> Fuck all that hey shit. can can Vane be on the tour with us? Because otherwise it's just us by ourselves. And they're like, yeah, sure. Thinking that like Vane is... <laughs> <laughs> So, and essentially there's that, that creates some like nonverbal contract where that vein is just doing the tour for $0 by us, us asking if vein can do the tour. They like didn't rework the budget at all. So day one, all their shit, they've got a van, they've got a driver, they're using gear, like. This costs thousands of dollars. Thousands, yeah. The, and if the people listening, like bands will understand how much this shit costs. Just flying there is yeah. oh, dude, four or five grand. Oh, I had it. All, I I had it added up real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, day dude. one, minibus is dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. It's like okay, well the AC minibus shit the bed before we even got to the first show. Uh... It crawled into the first show and was dead. We got to the first show right before we had to go on. Oh, Literally, headline. Yes. Oh my god! It was. It was. Uh, it was day one. Was just like, all right, we're we're in pain. Yeah, we're and the, dude, the first yeah. show on a Euro tour is always so weird. Yeah, there's so much rust and jet lag and just like weirdness to knock off. That like showing up and having to immediately go on is it was fifteen minutes for yeah. oh my god yeah it was brutal um but then it's like you know that and that it comes with that as you know Bo being a guitar player as as you do Colin being a guitar player wow <laughs> like then you got to figure out okay fuck we're going on in fifteen minutes we're running and gunning what do I got for equipment. <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh, luckily we had marshals. Yeah, it was yeah. all good. Yeah. <clears throat> Me and Taylor got marshals. We're fucking fine. Yeah. Always, forever. Any model, it doesn't matter. But like, <laughs> well, thank God for that. But I was just like, but the but the fervor of insanity of like jet lag, not sleeping, and fucking the bus going dying. upside down. Yeah. We had a crazy adventure in the town that we stayed in the first night with the weird place that we stayed, where the guys didn't show up to let us in for hours. 
Like all this crazy stuff culminated to us not sleeping for like two days uh, and having to play. Oh, you're on in 15 minutes and it's like midnight. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> Sean, the hostel where the guy running it Yo. had no shirt on. And showed up in a BMW with no shirt on and kept walking into our room, into our, like the room where we were paying to sleep and turning the air conditioner off. Oh my God. <laughs> what, it was, was like Germany. Yes. It was of like, course. this oh, is yes. it. We're going like, we're going to prison for life in Germany <laughs> today. Yeah. So to the point he, and- he walked outside for a second and we just went to the lobby and took the remote and kept it. Nice. Yeah, we just kept it in the room smart. Like, fuck this. Oh, um, my God. They're so, so weird about AC over there, man. And then the they windows. Hate they hate it. And the windows don't have screens. They just they open. No. They open. They want the bugs in. They want... <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They want the bugs the in. The window cracks like this. Oh, God. Um, oh, you go. You have air now. You're like, do I? <laughs> I got do something. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so we're at, the, we're at the first show. It's like a mini fest that we're headlining. Yep. The minibus is dead. So uh, uh, the sprinter, Bo, the, the same sprinter, yeah. comes and picks us up. The oh, one man. from Hungary with the Norbit DVD in it comes and picks us up. <laughs> um, and we get to the second show, and that's when we dis- we're like, okay, is there going to be another minibus to come? And they're like, no, this is d- it doesn't exist. And that's then the they're one. like, oh, also, uh, Vane's not getting paid at all. So how did you want to handle that? And we were like, what? Like we're we're in a German village, on a mountain. Literally, a village. A vi- like a a village. Not dude. not a town. <laughs> not a city. Not a town. A village. And or as they say, a village. A village. <laughs> Taylor's screaming on the phone, and essentially what we worked out against all desires and hopes and dreams. Like this tour existed so that we. It was like okay, I'll do it. If I for can comfort, lay, if I can lay down, totally. you know, yeah, totally. Uh, and that's how it was sold to me. Yeah. Right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it won't be that bad. It's not a bus, but, but yeah, but also, you know, whatever I'm in it to win it with these dudes. So yeah. Cause like, we whatever. did the persistence tour a year earlier on a bus. It was right. great. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I, yeah. I had never done that before. Changed my life. Oh, touring okay. oh. on a bus yep. is a completely different animal. Speaking of bus and kale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At one point, this is like, this is, this will describe Kale in a nutshell. Kale, I love you, but just listen to this. <laughs> where there's a top floor where all the bunks are, right? Kale and I's bunks are right across from each other. There's no window outside of the bunks. <laughs> so we have the same view of the outside. I don't know where we're stopped, but Kale rips his, <laughs> rips his blinds open. Come. 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 And I'm like, what's up, Kale? And he's like, are we at a gas station? <laughs> I'm like, Kale, I don't know. I can, I can see. <laughs> yeah. Yo, two things that Kale, yo, I think of these two things and I laugh sometimes just out of nowhere. I hear, I think of these two phrases. Are we at a gas station? And I laugh my ass off. The The other one that's my favorite. Yeah. Are we at the venue? (laughs) This is this is in our van. When you're in a van that has windows everywhere. He's he's we're in America in the van. (laughs) Are we at the van? Motherfucker, I don't know. You tell me. He's like this. His window's right here. And he'll still just be like, God. God. Are we at the venue? (laughs) Amazing. Um yeah, that but that's Kale and he's he's amazing and that's why we love him. I, I got one on our yeah. on our tour. We'll get back to Europe, but on our on the the co <laughs> release tour that we were talking about, we were playing in Montreal at like up three flights of stairs. I remember that one. Kale's playing. You guys finish finish the song, and <clears throat> he's like, "Wait a minute, wait, like hold on, I can't, I, like I can't, like." St- you know, and there's like feedback. You guys are like, what's going on? And he's like, give me a minute. And we're like, oh shit, does he need water? You know, whatever. And he takes a hoodie. He's got no shirt on. <laughs> he takes a hoodie. He ties it around his waist. One, two, three, four. And then we're going. 
His back was hurting. He needed a little support, man. Give him a break. <laughs> was this a... Was this a, a... What a nut. Foofs? Is that what it was? Yeah, that was the place that was real... Uh, yeah, it was three floors up, man. Holy shit. Then we went and got the, them crazy hot dogs. Yep. Yeah, we Sean, got the hot dogs. Sean, That's that right. was where you hit your head entering the stage to play. Oh, yeah. Just the whole set, just like this. <laughs> <laughs> just... Mad at and the world. It was world. Thanksgiving. It oh. was Thanksgiving. Oh my God. I remember that. Yo, so here, yo, so it was Thanksgiving. <laughs> so here's here's a part. So it's Thanksgiving. I bash my head, and then I'm getting pictures of my wife from my wife at my best friend and his family's Thanksgiving party, having the times of their lives, literally sending me pictures of them eating Thanksgiving, like my like my wife and my dad, my best friend's dad oh. picture together, like, oh, shit. And we're in French and Canada. Like, and I get all homesick for a minute, and I'm trying to be tough about it because we're all in the same dressing room and shit. And then you hit your and head. And I smash my fucking yeah. head. And that was, like, this is, I think that was the first time I heard a patented Sean Martin Fuck! <laughs> Which would become a signature. There's there's two two moments, both both in Germany. I think there was at that mall that was like this was like third to last day of tour in Germany. A random we have like an hour at a mall, and I I'm we're going our separate ways because we just need some space. Yeah, totally. And I hear from across the mall, <sighs> like reverbing through the whole mall, and I was like. Oh, where's Sean up to? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a signature Sean, uh, I think it was like last week of tour, he looks me in the eyes and says, I am booking a flight home. <laughs> and I was like, I love you, buddy. I'm sorry. I was I'm like, sorry. you do what you got to do. I, I understand. understand. Yeah. I'm sorry for everything. Um, I didn't. He didn't book flight home. Nope. He's the man. The man is a trooper. He's. We had a broken AC on a summer tour one time, and he. Fuck. He just existed <laughs> until we bought. We, we just Taylor and I just bought a whole new van because that oh. one broke, which is we're still <laughs> still paying for it. I think we got like two years left on it. So. Oh my god. Um. Interesting time, huh? <laughs> haven't, haven't 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 toured since. Yeah, haven't. So it was the Euro but, tour and then the U.S. tour and, and that was it. Oh, dude. it was wild. It was like, but I won't. Uh, I'll look at it like I'll still accept the challenge. Like I'm not. The universe was trying to break us down a little yeah. bit for some reason. <laughs> but we won. But, yeah. Wait, this was that was before the the hate pre tours. No, this was the I mean, last after, one. This, this is the last 20, one. Summer 2018 oh, yeah. was like when oh, we were like, oh okay, it was collectively. I mean, we have Alec too, who is just like an adult. It, if an adult, but also like he's, we're dead outside in terms of our reaction to things. Like Sean and I will be like, this fucking sucks. Fuck. Alec is just sitting there like this, <laughs> <laughs> and you just know he's like. In his mind, he's in Afghanistan again. I knew, like, I knew you were going to say that. He's, you know, <laughs> him and his squad is looking out for IEDs, and he's just sitting oh like... Oh, my God. What? Were there any good European shows on that tour? Any highlights? Because uh, we shit on crazy. Europe a lot. There's going to be a theme on this show. No, I'm, we, we, played one, we played a show with Hatebreed that was pretty sick. That was great, and Suffocation, and... Uh, yep. What, we almost beat up Suffocation's sound guy? Yeah, there was a guy oh. in Suffocation's crew that I guess was wilding the fuck out, but he, he but decided not the to. The band was lovely. Right. And I'm, I'm Yeah, they were great. I'm like a like a lifelong Suffocation guy, but some somebody on the tour was was being Someone was mad at us for some reason. And it wasn't anybody in my former band that was headlining, so I couldn't understand no. it. Mm. Right, yeah. I was just like, yo, <laughs> wow, that's funny. I, hey, I know I'm the opener, but fun fact. Uh, I'm still part of the company. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, <It's> true. <laughs> what is going on? Like, I walked in the dressing room and there was like shit had just cooled down, which I'm psyched about because. <laughs> it, yeah, I was, it, 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 it didn't escalate, but it was, you know. There's. Uh... Yeah, someone was just mad. I think someone had a few too many drinks and they were a little bit hot. Uh, uh, 
just mad about what else is some new? dumb shit that didn't matter. I, I felt thought, yeah. Go ahead. I felt bad because I was like, I love suffocation. I'm like, I don't want. <laughs> yeah, we we had a similar thing with decapitated. They had a, uh, you know, they're Polish. They don't really know what's going on. I was on an at, at the gates tour and they had this fucking tour manager who was just like mm-hmm. the whole time, just like complaining about shit. He was like, I could be in Europe right now with Tesseract. Oh my God. <laughs> and we were just like, all right, dude, you know, and, and like de- decapitation. This is before all the like controversies that they were later exonerated for, but you know, it was before yep. all that. And it was like, I felt bad for them because they're just trying to tour. Like they're just yeah. literally trying to do their thing. And uh, dude, one night, this is a classic Chris Mills. We had the only thing on Harm's Way's rider ever is going to be water, <laughs> Diet Cokes, and sh- five sugar free Red Bulls. That's mm-hmm. all we ever really want, right? And we're playing, it's like a real tour because uh, it's at the gates and blah, blah, blah. And the tour manager had just gotten off a two year tour with Weird Al, Colin. Two years? Two years with Weird Weird Al. I would do that in a heartbeat. It, I mean, she said... And I know that Sean would, too. <laughs> she, she was awesome. I forget her name, Rachel or something. But anyway, we had our... We were somewhere in, we were in Austin. We had our Red Bulls. Chris cracks one open, and this guy, the tour manager for Decap, Decapitated, is like, you know, we're supposed to fucking share those, man. And Chris, knowing... Chris is the guy who put in the rider mm-hmm. and knowing blah, blah, he sips it. He goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the guy who's like walks out mumbles and he straight up is like, hey, fucking joke on it, man. And then like walks out complaining. Shut up. Oh really? I swear to God. And we mentioned it to, to the weird Al chick. And she was like, and, and someone was joking and like, I'm going to, I'm going to stab that guy. And she pulls out and she was like, here you go. Pulled out a knife. She was down. Weird Al is down. Totally down. Wow. No problem. Fuck yeah. Rachel and Michelle. She was great. I love Weird Al. So, <laughs> oh, dude, so I, I'm sure I was she's playing good. Weird Al's band all day. Dude, I would, uh, like, other than, uh, my wife would be down, too. If I was like, honey, Weird, Weird Al needs me, she'd be like, let's pack. Oh, yeah. Let's get you out of here. Weird, weird Al yeah. opening for the yeah. Spice Girls. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> it was, my wife would insist that I took that gig yeah. to Absolutely. such an extent. Yeah. Um, She'd be like, that is great. You need to go do that. A, get out of here. B, that's sick. <laughs> but I do find a lot of times it's like the hired guns that aren't really a part of the band unit yeah. are the problematic ones. You know what I mean? But then you have like Kiss, who tours with Haybreed, who is just like, he was lovely. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, he's great. And by the end, he's, by cool. the he's, end like he's like asking you questions. He's like, do you have a cat? What is its name? You know. Like, yeah, yeah, get, yeah. Getting getting to know yeah. you. <laughs> so sometimes, man, they could be like. I definitely had a lot of experiences with that. They they try to have a hierarchy or whatever of tour, and I, but that's so whack. It's there's so no, whack. there's no reason not to be nice. We're all suffering. Yeah, yeah, like you know, there's a way to communicate, and you know, I, I get that you have a stressful job or whatever, and that's from having been like you know when Hapri was a headliner, like when I was in Hapri, you were headlining and stuff. <clears throat> you know, the tour manager's job, the objective is to, yes, that get the headliner as many perks and this and that as possible and this and that, but like never at the expense, at, of the, at the expense of someone else or whatever. You know what I mean? Like we played with, like we did tours when we, when we were like coming up and stuff that we, we witnessed stuff. We'd be like, Whoa, that's fucked up. Like yeah, yeah. cutting local acts yeah. and yeah. like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, just dudes swinging their dicks around or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, for lack of a better way to put it, pretty much that's what it is. But like, dude, just being mad, you know, whatever. They're having a bad day and getting yelled at about something. So the trickle down theory is mm-hmm. like, you know, the crew at the club and then the fucking opener and then the fucking band that's on tour with them are all going to get a piece of it because their wife's chewing them out at home oh, or yeah. some shit. We learned it's so fucked up. I just be like, damn, kid. We learned really quick on our first. We we opened up for the Acacia Strain on a tour, and Mr. Bruce LePage was tour managing. Mm-hmm. And we learned real, real quick just to like be on time. That's the only thing oh, that yeah. really matters. Just be on time. Well, that's the thing that matters. Like, just have your shit together. Yeah. Have your camp together. Yeah. Be there. It's all business. As as long as your business is straight, fuck around. Do whatever you want. Yeah. You, you just know? Gotta... be there on time. Load in when you're supposed to load in. Sound check if you get one. Don't complain if you don't. Yeah. And get off the stage be, when you have be to. happy to be here and like get the fuck off. Get the fuck off. Like it's simple. Yeah. 
but you know it, it, it really was like and trust me we were horrible fuck ups like we were <laughs> hilarious fuck ups yeah. like but we learned how not to be and then you know but then it if we were ever in a situation where someone was opening for us and it was you know obviously how are you gonna get mad at somebody when you were like the king of the fucking mess at one point you yeah, know yeah, man. you understand whatever younger band is going through or what you know something breaks down or shit's real that stuff's real but it is funny man like the the, the tour managers that like whatever Ugh. we uh, you know i'll tell you a funny story man <laughs> like do. real quick i won't say any names and i won't even whatever yeah. but a big band that i had toured with when i was in Hatebreed had a tour manager at one point that definitely was a complete jerk but you know we didn't care we were always just us whatever it's all good mm. it was definitely a jerk to a kind of like a little more so than normal whatever but all good life goes on years later i don't know i'm working for cuddy and i'm playing some like big college show in connecticut actually and some big college thing some whatever and backline there's backline and everything and the backline company shows up and then the person that's uh the head of the backline is the person that was the tour manager that was a total jerk to me wow. like did you remember back in the day yeah but oh I you don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but but but, but we recognize there was a recognition yeah yeah and then i was just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, oh, excuse me. I want my Marshall cabinets next to each other on this show. Can you take them see, down? That, next that's next to that's each other? how you win. Yeah. Yeah. Just by. And it's like, cool. Like, cool. And there was no, not even any other, no, other than like, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yes, sir. So, like, <laughs> call me, sir. Like, but, you know, so, <laughs> like, you know, like, who the fuck am I anyway? Like, that's so goddamn hilarious. Yep. Like, that was like a true, like, like a uh, fucking nod from like the universe being like, hey, it was. Remember that shit like ten years ago? Here you go, kid. Yeah, you're above it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, that's so good. We're we're hitting the one hour mark here. Um, Jeez, it just it flies goes. by, man. It's where yeah. we, we have fun. We're just ch friends chatting, and then and then before you know it, <laughs> whole day's gone by. I I have one more Kaleism that I just need <laughs> to bring up, and and Sean, I think you and I recently talked about this one is. Day one in Japan, a, a normal conversation is happening in the van amongst like everybody. Kale's in his own world looking out the window. You know, just like, hmm. oh, look, it's Japan. <laughs> We're all just like, yeah, you know, like, uh, yeah, judgment never did. Their seven inches are sick. And then Kale, mid conversation, <laughs> goes, What is Ratatouille? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it's a it's a Pixar movie. And he goes, no, 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 the the food. Like, what is it? Oh my god! It's so real. It's so oh my god! <laughs> that was great. That's so fucking real. The the last he always he says the last thing you ever expect him to say. And it's amazing. What is what is <laughs> Fuck, man. Like, you can't get mad at him. No. no matter how mad you get at him. Right. No matter what. Fuck you. Have you, you shouldn't get mad at have him. You, He's awesome. Have you seen the uh, the Lord of the Rings meme where it's Bilbo with the ring in his pocket? And Gandalf's like, I believe you still have my lighter. And Bilbo, like, reaches for it and he's like, I believe uh, it appears I do. That's that is your dynamic entirely. Where Kale will be like, <laughs> Kale will be like, Sean, can I have my lighter back? And it'll be the lighter he borrowed from you last time. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. Oh, I love it. I mean, I can, I gotta have him. We gotta have him on the show. Yeah, fuck. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, man. He's got stories. <laughs> he is the story. It's amazing. Yeah, he is the story. Is there any? Is, oh, is there man. a final tale or anecdote or thing you would like to leave with with the world, Sean? Oh man, I don't know. Do you I have a know. favorite, uh, uh, like a favorite show that comes to mind with Twitching Tongues or Hate Breed or where your wounds or like anything you know that you've played for? Just anything that where oh, you're like, man. oh man, this was a good. That was a good day yeah i got yeah everything like that definitely like uh it's a broad question i know Nah, yeah but like getting to do you know like getting to play like the oz fests and shit in connecticut yeah 
yeah. pretty consistently for like a few years, like five or six years, like type shit. It was kind of like a cool, that's pretty sick, man. Like, yeah. to like, like Connecticut's really small. So like, and I'm from a certain part of it. So like, it was cool. Like to be like, fuck man. Like we're just fucking smashing it right now. Yeah. Like, and there's like, you know, th- those moments were really cool. Like not, a show in particular, but the Ozfests at home yeah. were cool because it just was like an accomplishment. You're getting the nod you know, from like the the heavy yeah. thing, like yeah, yeah, you know, like getting my brother and a bunch of dudes that he's in the union with backstage at an Ozzy show. Basically, yeah, that's yeah. all it really is. To, oh yeah, my brother's playing with Ozzy. Yeah. Like, don't matter what the <laughs> fuck's going. On. Well, you know, so like that's awesome. That that kind of stuff was awesome. And then, <laughs> I, ironically enough. Grand opening, grand closing, getting to fucking open the show with Twitching Tongues and close the show with Hatebreed, pretty fucking sick. That's awesome. That Dude. that is very cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. like like really cool uh, place to be in. Like not like not weird, awesome. Like I'm like holy fuck, yeah, man, this is fucking sick. I didn't plan that. Nothing's planned, but like having the opportunity to like play with the band that I'm in opening for my old band and then playing the last three or four songs with my old band. It was a weird, cool thing that I never would have thought would have happened in a million years that I'm super grateful for too. Same. Like I like great, grateful is the term that comes to mind when, when I just see that I'm like, man, I'm, I'm watching the band that like made me fall in love with music kind of. And like that, I'm friends with that guy. I'm in a band. <laughs> like that, that, that's that. a perfect way to, to wrap this up, I think. Yeah, that uh, is absolutely. full yeah. cosmic circle. That's beautiful. Love Excellent. you, Sean. Thank you. I love Thank you, too. you. You're well wonderful. Said. Gorgeous. Gorgeous time. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, I love you too, Bo. Absolutely. You're wonderful. Uh, I'm so happy to hear from you, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm glad I miss you're doing you guys well. a lot, man. Really? Likewise, yeah. I hope we all get to hang out in real life again P- soon. Plug your, uh, your apiary. Oh, yeah. So check it out. We got the Martin Hives, uh, my bee company, my bee company. I don't make the bees. We got a honey company, uh, the Martin Hives. Uh, you can just go martinhives.com. That'll take you to the link that'll take you to our store via Death Wish. And then I have a new thing. I have a I have my own like little label and everything now uh, via Death Wish. And I have like a store on there called Residual Effects. And like I'm just putting out all my like cool weirdo rap beat stuff awesome. and then eventually a bunch bunch of heavy stuff is coming out too but once my ocds <laughs> once i get over my ocds and can actually record guitars to where i'm satisfied with them by the time i'm 75 <laughs> ah, it's the heavy stuff will come out awesome. yeah whatever we'll make- but yeah so residual effects in the martin hives check that stuff out and that's where i'm at we'll make sure that's linked too in the yeah, uh, i got, yeah, I got the you covered brother awesome. that was awesome. that Thank was you. episode three of hard lore stories from tour thank you guys so much for joining us peace out Hey everybody, do you want to be part of the next episode of Hard Lore? If so, we've got an email ready for submissions. Bo, take it away. It is notfesthardlore, all one word, at gmail.com. Send us stories through text, video, be descriptive, be discreet, you know? Yeah. Because we don't want to get in trouble. Don't say names if, yeah, just be be careful, but we want to... We want to know everyone's stories, regardless. Yeah, if you pissed your pants, I want to hear about it. So send us those stories. Bye.